Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Another day that the Lord has kept us. Uh, it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Where will we be today? We reverence God. Amen. For one more privilege and one more opportunity to, to be in the house of prayer one more time. Amen. To bring this word. Amen. As he sent it. Amen. Through by way of social media. We thank God. Amen. Amen. For just waking us up this morning. Starting us on our way. Amen. We woke up, amen, some of us, amen, all didn't get up, but we thank God that we got up, amen. We were able to move about and dress ourselves and, amen, being able, amen, just to maneuver. We praise God for the victory on this morning. We thank God, amen, how he kept us in our right mind. Can't nobody do it but Jesus. Uh, in times like these, we need a Savior. Oh, God, in times like these, we need a Savior. And we thank God, amen, for, amen, just being so good to us. We praise God this morning for him being on our side and the shield of protection all around us making a way and open doors that no man can close and closing doors that no man can open. He's God all by himself. We thank God for his son who paid the ultimate price for us, came down 42 generations, died on Calvary Cross, that you and I might have this right to the tree of life and be able, amen, to lift up holy hands and say thank you, Jesus, amen, paid our sin debt, a debt that we could not pay. We, we got so much to praise the Lord for, to the precious Holy Ghost that came down, amen, to abide in our soul, to preserve us until the day uh, of Jesus. Jesus coming, and not as just to preserve us until the day of his coming, but to lead us and to guide us and to teach us into all truths. Amen. We praise the, the Trinity on today. Amen. We thank God. Amen. As I said, this is a day that the Lord had made. We shall rejoice and be glad it is. And we are so thankful. Amen. How the Lord did bless the amen on yesterday, blessed us to serve. Amen. And food distribution along with... Um, Firstborn Community Development and Greater New Birth in St. Monica, how the Lord did bless us on yesterday, amen, to provide over 250 boxes of food for, amen, for the community and surrounding areas, amen, trying to make sure that people are blessed. And God is opening up so many doors and making so many ways. And this is what he promised us. Amen. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God had gave us a provision, amen, to be a blessing to the people. And we thank everybody who come out and help us, amen. We got to just give God the honor, amen, because it's not us. We're not this big. God is big, and he's big, and he, make, he makes us amen thankful amen for what he's doing and we just thank god amen for all our apostles our preachers amen the fivefold ministry ministry amen we're so thankful today amen and we're thankful for the privilege and opportunity of social media for the ones that make it possible for us to come on social media amen because amen i'm not very knowledgeable in social media but god always got somebody amen that can be a blessing to us and we praise him now for that amen for doors swinging open amen and him he is a door opening god amen and we just praise god we're gonna get to the word of god from mark Amen. The fifth chapter, the 25th verse, very familiar scripture. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him a turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, 
Thou seest the multitude thrown in thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. Father, we thank you now for your written word, for your read word, now your preached and your taught word. We thank you for this privilege and opportunity you've given us just to come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. We thank you now, Lord, and we ask you as you are searching the rings of my heart this morning, if you see anything that's not like anything that should not be, I ask you to take it out and strengthen me, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me, Lord. Give me what to say to your people, Lord Jesus. I bless your holy name right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you right now to clear the airways of our hearts, Lord. Let our hearts receive the word let every stony heart be made of flesh oh god i thank you now that this as this word go out god oh god that it'll touch where you say touch and it'll do what you say do move where you say move strengthen where you say strengthen and i thank you to uplift somebody today i thank you lord jesus for another opportunity just to just that my work might be pleasing in your sight and i say to the holy spirit have your way right now we know that you're already present because we could feel you in the midst and we welcome Welcome you to have your way. We yield ourselves to you. Do what needs to be done in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of all our sin. Anything. The sin of omission, the sin of commission. Forgive us now. We need your forgiveness. And help us to forgive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we look into the word today. We're looking at Mark, the fifth chapter. Very familiar text about a woman with an issue of blood. And we've heard it many a times. And as I said, it's a familiar scripture. She had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And she kept going from doctor to doctor. But every doctor she went to, even though, you know, they gave her the medication, they gave her the antidote they gave her what to do she was not getting any better but yet she was getting worse amen she spent all the money she had so this shows us amen that when she started out she had some money but now she spent all the money that she had and when you spend all your money you got to pay to go to the doctor amen so somebody stopped by and told her about Jesus. I don't know how, amen, they told her. Maybe somebody, because it was the Jewish law that when you have an issue of blood, you was considered to be unclean. And you could not be in public around people. Amen. You had to stay your distance and you could not, amen, be out in the crowd. So I don't know if this woman was home, amen, and and somebody came by her window as she was laying, oh man, to the window or sitting in the house and told her about Jesus. Uh, I don't know how you heard about Jesus, but however you heard about him, I'm glad that somebody told you about Jesus. Uh, I'm glad that somebody, amen, stopped by my house one day and told me about a man named Jesus. Well, the Bible said, and when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind him. And this woman, amen, she, when she heard, she made up her mind what she was going to do. Amen. Hearing and doing. I, I want to preach a little bit today from what is your issue? What is your issue? Everybody has an issue. Whether you deal with it or not. But we live in a society, in a world where everybody can point fingers at somebody else and never deal with their own issues, but rather deal with other issues. Where people can see, amen, what's wrong with you and can't see what's wrong with them. What is your issue? This woman realized that she had an issue. She started going to doctors to get help for her issues. What are you doing about your issue? Amen. And as we look and we always can see another man's fault, we got, we're talking about 
their toothpick in their eye and we got a tree run through ours. We got so much going on in our own lives, but we can point fingers at our neighbors. We can point fingers at the one, amen, that we go to church with. We can point fingers all over the place, but never directing, amen, what, d d back to your issue. Never getting help for your issue. We got people, amen, that dealing with all kinds of issues in the church dealing with issues. It's okay to have an issue, but are you dealing with your issue? Are you trying to get help for your issue? If you need a foot doctor, don't go to the heart doctor. Amen. You need to go to a foot doctor. Amen. If you got a heart problem, you don't need to go, amen, to a psychologist. You need to get to the heart doctor. Amen. If you got an issue going on, you need to get to Jesus. This woman realized her need. And after she had spent all her money and suffered many things and many physicians and was steadily growing worse and somebody told her about Jesus, the word of God said, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She grabbed hold to faith. Uh, she was really going through 12 years of suffering. Her body was weak. Amen. And I'm sure that it had affected her mentally. Amen. I know it had affected her physically. Amen. But then here somebody is come by and give her something spiritual. Amen. And she got up off her bed I say and she came in the press behind Jesus uh, and she saw the crowd and she knew she was not supposed to be in the crowd but when you got something going on in your life you are not let nobody stop you from getting to Jesus you are not let nobody stop you from getting the help that you need stop letting what folks say about you stop you uh, yeah she was considered unclean but she had made up her mind I'm not gonna let nobody stop me I'm gonna get to Jesus and I don't have to shake his hand. He don't have to knock me with oil. He don't have to lay hands on me. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know everything will be all right. She got in the press and came behind him. I heard the message, how bad do you want it? Some people, amen, when, when, when they feel like folk talking about them, they'll stop coming to church. You don't need to stop coming to church because somebody talking about you. You need to feel like if I'm that important, amen, that they got time to talk about me. That I, I am important. If I'm imp I, I thank God I'm important enough for you to stay on the phone a half an hour and two hours for to talk about me to your friends. I'm am, I'm very important to you. Amen. But here, amen, we 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 living in a day and time where folk just will not work on themselves. You got doctors that got problems, lawyers got problems. Nurses got problems. Hello? Amen. Our children got problems. Mothers and fathers got issues. Issues all over the place. We need to work on our issue. But when this woman, amen, came down behind Jesus, and, she, and, and I'm sure while she was in the crowd, she faced many things because she was well known. She'd been like this for 12 years. Amen. Folk already knew, amen, that she wasn't supposed to be in the crowd. I'm sure she got some funny actions. She got some funny looks. She got some, some you ain't supposed to be here looks. She got some look like what you here for. She got some looks like you so nasty. I'm sure she got all kinds of looks. She got all kinds of faces looking at her. She, she might have got a couple of pushes. She might have got a cut. Uh, uh, a couple of, of, of people pushing her away, but she stayed in the press. I don't care what you're going through. You need to get to Jesus. Jesus is your helper. You don't need to stop. You got people falling out of church in time like this, talking about the church ain't right. The, you, the church is in you. Are you right? Amen. What is your issue this morning? We're dealing with e issues, amen, all over. Amen. People don't know how to love like Jesus loved. Right. Amen. But here, this woman, they said straightway, when she touched Jesus, yeah, when she finally got to him and touched him, amen, it made everything all right. Yeah, and it says straightway, the foundation of her blood dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that place. Something happened to her that had not happened. She felt something that she had not felt in 12 years. She felt a relief uh, after 12 years and after all the money being gone. 
after all the suffering that she went through, amen, for 12 years and all the weekdays and all the days that she didn't feel like getting up and doing nothing, amen. But now one time she touched Jesus' garment, amen, and the word said straightway the blood dried up. I'm here to let you know what is your issue. If you got an issue, if you touch Jesus, I want you to know that you don't have to keep that issue around. You don't have to nurse that issue. The issue grows because you nurse it. You hold it close to your heart. You ponder on it. You think about it. You, you lay down with it. You get up with it. And then the next day you got the same old issue. But when you get to Jesus uh, and you touch Jesus uh, and Jesus touch you back, uh, everything will be all right. Uh, God, in, in this scripture, uh, we see when she touched Jesus, uh, the fountain of blood dried up uh, and she could feel it in her body. Uh, nobody don't have to tell you uh, that you got rid of it. Uh, nobody had to tell you, uh, but you know in yourself uh, that I ain't that way no more. Uh, you've been mean all your life, uh, and you got a nerd to say, uh, that's just how I am, uh, but that's not how you are. Uh, that's not the plan of God for your life. Uh, if you will go before the Lord, uh, amen, come godless sorrow uh, for your actions and the way you act. Uh, God can change you uh, just like that. Uh, I heard somebody say, huh, he working on me, huh? I am a process, huh? but I'm here to let you know huh, at some point, huh, even a process huh, come to fruition. Huh? You got to come to a place huh, in your life huh, where you recognize huh, that I've been touched huh, by Jesus. Huh? I've been changed. Huh? What is your issue? Huh? Somebody today huh, might have a drug issue. Huh? Somebody huh, might be promiscuous. Huh? might be a harlot huh? you might be a liar huh? but what is your issue huh? we got tail bearers huh? what is your issue huh? oh god we got home rakers, huh? what is your issue huh? whatever your issue is huh? hear the word of god huh? faith coming by hearing huh? and hearing by the word of god huh? if you touch jesus huh? call on the name of jesus huh? the deliverance in jesus huh? if you get ready huh? to get rid of huh? the issue huh? he will huh? deliver you huh? what is huh? your issue huh? you might think huh? you're getting away huh? but I'm here to let you know huh? that God huh? sees all huh? and he knows all huh? and I'm telling you today huh? you're going to reap what you sow huh? you need to get ready huh? oh my God because huh? God is huh? already ready you ain't waiting on him he's waiting on you what is your issue I know sometimes you feel like you can't help yourself but the help in Jesus you can't do it he didn't ask you to do it by yourself but he asked you to recognize that you need help you got to acknowledge that you got a problem stop putting your problem on everybody else somebody picking on me ain't nobody picking on you. Huh? You got to get ready. Huh? Oh, yes, you have. Huh? If you want this good deliverance huh? that only God can give huh? through his son Jesus, huh? he will deliver you. Huh? But when she got in that prayer time, huh? she made up her mind. Huh? She said to herself, huh? what are you saying today? Huh? What are you saying to yourself? Because huh? she said, huh? if I could just touch huh? the hem of his garment, huh? I know I'll be made whole. Huh? But then I after she spoke it, huh? she got out and did something about it. Huh? A whole lot of talking going on, huh? but you ain't doing nothing about it. Huh? I want to know today huh? if you huh, got an issue, huh? will you come to Jesus huh? and let him work it out? Huh? Stop talking about the church. Huh? It ain't the church because huh? the people huh, is in the church, huh? but the church huh, is in you. Huh? I wonder today, huh, do you want to be huh, a part of the solution? Huh? Do you want to make it right huh, with you and God? Huh? This woman huh, found huh, her healing when she touched Jesus. You'll find yours too when you touch Jesus. And Jesus, virtue went out of him. He felt the power go out of him. Healing power 
went out of him. He turned and said, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? The disciples said unto him, Master, all these people thronging you and you asked who touched your clothes? They thought Jesus didn't know somebody touched him. But Jesus know when we touch him. We got people that get on the altar. We got people that just stand around the altar and cry like a baby. But still ain't touch Jesus. They cry, cry, and cry some more. But they have not touched Jesus. When you touch Jesus, it bring about a change. Jesus said, who touched my clothes? This woman had touched him. But she just didn't touch him with her hand. She touched him with her heart. It was in her heart that she wanted to be healed. And she knew that he had the power to heal her. See, people think they're fooling leaders. You can fool me sometime. But you can't fool God no time. I don't have healing. God has the healing. Through his son Jesus. And the Bible said. Jesus turned and to see. Who touched him. And he saw this woman. Trembling. Crying and trembling. When you, Jesus touched her. It bring about an emotion. <clears throat> you can't get touched by Jesus. And not have an emotion. Tears run. When you said I won't gonna cry. Tears flow. When you said, I'm going to sit here and be still, amen, sometimes your feet get to running. Something happened when you touch Jesus. And I can imagine that if you've been in the same situation, getting worse and worse after 12 years, and it looked like there's no hope, and Jesus touched you and healed you, it brings about a lot of emotion. It don't have to be 12 years. It could be 12 hours. Uh, some things are traumatic enough that if you've been there 12 days, if you've been there 12 minutes, uh, amen, it's traumatic enough that uh, you can just get Jesus to touch you, or you could touch Jesus, that it'll bring about an emotion. Amen. And it brought about an emotion in her. She started to crying. And she and Jesus spoke to her. She told Jesus the whole story. Before that, she came and she just fell on her face before him. And the word said she told him all the truth. She told him her story. She told him what she had been through. That's right, and she told him what made her came, come yeah. that night or that day in order to, that she might mm -hmm. get her healing. Amen. Yes. And this is what Jesus spoke. Daughter, yes, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace yes, and be whole of that plague. Hallelujah. Jesus healed her yes. and made her whole. The word whole means nothing lacking, nothing missing. He restored her. Yes, he totally Amen. restored her. Hallelujah. Totally delivered her. Yes, he she knew it within herself. Yes, the songwriter said, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Amen. You couldn't have made her doubt that she had been healed. Right. That she had been set free. Oh, that the blood had been dried up and her strength. God, he gave us strength. Amen. And I believe that her finances was restored. Amen. Daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Amen. Why don't you let your faith make you whole? Hallelujah. Stop leaning on every, everything else and lean on Jesus. Hallelujah. Stop depending on others to deliver you. Hallelujah. Jesus is your deliverer. Yes, what is your issue today? All of us are going through something. All of us got this thing that we don't want nobody else to know about. It don't have to be alcohol, because we got some people that would never drink alcohol. But Lord knows they just the mean. What is your issue? We got people that would never be a homewrecker but they don't have the love of Jesus. So you can't point fingers at somebody else. 
you need to look at your own self. Do a self-inventory. Do a self-inventory of yourself today. And recognize your own issue. What do you need help with? All of us need help. Maybe you talk too much. You need help. Huh? Maybe you don't talk enough. You need help. Hello? Maybe you catch yourself in a lie. You need help. Maybe you use swearing words, cursing words. You need help. Maybe you sitting back and saying, well, I ain't going to never be like that. Oh, you need help. You need to consider yourself. You need help. What is your issue? Maybe you think you're better than somebody else. What is your issue? That's a real problem right there. Maybe you caught up in the pride of life, lust of the flesh. Huh? You need help. Huh? Maybe you got a disobedient spirit. You need help. You got an issue. You got a contrary spirit. You got an issue. Hello? There's many issues that could be attacking us that we carry around every day. What is your issue? If you don't have the fruit of the spirit operating in your life, then you got some issues. If you have the Holy Ghost and the fruit of the spirit is not active in your life, if you don't have temperance, you got an issue because you fly off the handle. You don't have gentleness. You don't know how to handle people. Amen. We have issues going on. What is your issue? This woman had an issue for 12 years. How long have you had your issue? People think it's some big thing to say. I've been like this all my life. But I'm, be I'm telling you today, if you've been like that all your life, you were supposed to change when you got saved because the old things were done away with. Behold, all things are new. So you've been like that all your life. What happened at salvation that that didn't change? And you were mean before you got saved. It didn't take salvation to make you mean. You, you, you should have changed. Hello? If you, if you was promiscuous before you got saved, when you got saved, you, salvation brought about a change. Amen. Salvation will change you. Because salvation, in order to get saved, you got to repent. That means you got to come godly sorrow for your sin. Now, something you ain't godly sorrow for. Hello? You got to get help for your issue. Amen, a person, amen, with heart trouble. Amen, needs a heart doctor. Amen. If you got back trouble, you need a back doctor. If you got lung problem, you need a pulmonary doctor. Amen. You need a doctor that specializes in what you're going through. You need a doctor who have studied what you're going through. But now, 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 if you got a sin problem, you need Dr. Jesus. No medicine, no natural medicine, nothing natural can take away sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash your sins away. The songwriter said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash away your sin. Amen. And it take the blood of Jesus, amen, to heal you. You can't get healing through medicine. The, the Lord shared with me after going to my going to the doctor, amen, ye, for years, the Lord showed me one day, he said, doctors treat the symptoms, but I do the healing. And I had faith, but it shocked my faith. It brought it back to my remembrance that Jesus is my healer. Yeah, we want the symptoms treated. Nobody want to be in pain all the time. Nobody want to be in agony all the time. It's all right. They have the, the, the symptoms treated. But you need to deal with the root of the matter. Hello? 
Well, you got issues. We got issues. We got hidden issues. And when those issues lie in us and we don't deal with them, they become a monster. Some people go to the doctor and the doctor say, you got cancer, but we caught it in time. We got it. And they can get just a small treatment. Some go that it had been lying dominant in, just lying there eating them up. And the doctor saying, nothing we can do. Now, where are you with Jesus? Where are you with Jesus? I want to let you know there's nothing that he cannot do. And this woman, the Bible says she wasn't getting any better, but she was yet getting worse. But when she got to Jesus, Jesus healed her. He'll do the same thing for you. He will change you if you want to be changed. Some people like it. They like what they do. They like how they act. This is the wall of protection that they have built around themselves to protect them, amen, from the world. So I'm telling you today, you're going to have to take down that wall and, and recognize your issue and come to Jesus to fix your issue. Amen. We're glad you tuned in to us today. We have enjoyed preaching the gospel. What is your issue? I want you to remember that Jesus, amen, will fix anything that's going on with you. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, I guarantee you, you'll do something about it. Amen. You will come running to Jesus. But don't let it be too late. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. If you want to be saved, you can get saved. All you have to do is come God is sorrow for your sin. After coming God is sorrow for your sin, you ask him to come in. You repent. Repent means to turn. That means you got to acknowledge that you are a sinner. Then you turn away from your sin. And then as you turn away from your sin, you ask him to forgive you. And then he comes in and forgive you. You ask him to become, amen, Lord of your life. And you allow him, amen, to rule and super rule in your life. You give up you and, and, and take on Jesus. I guarantee you, you'll never be the same no more. Today, what is your issue? If you're saved, stay saved. In times like these, we need a savior. Keep praying for somebody else. Keep praying for yourself. Know this, that God has not amen gone to sleep because the word say he, he neither slumber nor do he sleep his eyes is upon us if his eyes is upon the sparrow you're much more valuable to him than a sparrow know that jesus is watching over you god bless you heaven smile upon you until we meet again